Welcome to IFRS Meaning. Today, we will talk about the changes in accounting estimates according to IAS 37. Changes in accounting estimates are changes in the valuation of the estimated liabilities as a result of new information received. For example, an entity acquired a machine for 2 million. On the other side, the entity's management estimated a useful life of 15 years. However, after five years, based on the new information provided by the supplier, the company estimates that the useful life should be 25 years instead of 15 years. This economic fact is a change in an accounting estimate since the change is the product of new information that the entity received, information that the company didn't have when calculating the initial estimate. So, how is the recognition of changes in accounting estimates? Accounting recognition of changes in estimates is simple because it's not necessary to affect prior accounting periods, unlike policy changes or accounting errors. We will take the same example shown above to analyze the effect of changes in accounting estimates. Remember that in this example, an entity acquired a machine for 2 million with an initial useful life of 15 years. However, at the end of year 5, the useful life changed from 15 to 25 years. So this accounting event is going to have an impact on the calculation of depreciation for subsequent years. This means that the company for year 6 must recognize the depreciation expense based on the asset's remaining useful life. In other words, by the end of year 5, the carrying amount of the asset is 1,333,000. Thus, to calculate depreciation for subsequent years, it is only necessary to take the carrying amount and divide it over 20 years. We take 20 years, considering that 5 years have passed since the asset's acquisition date. So, as we can see, we only affect the financial statements of subsequent periods. In other words, the financial statements from year 6 onwards. Something very different happens would have occurred if the change in the useful life had not been caused by new information received by the entity, but by an accounting error. In this example, we are going to assume that the supplier of the machine reported that the useful life of the machine should be 25 years, however, in the accounting department, the depreciation of this asset was calculated over 15 years. As we can see, this economic event is an accounting error. According to IAS 8, accounting errors must be recognized retrospectively. This means that we must impact the financial statements of the previous periods from when the error occurred. That is, from year 1. It is important to say that these errors must be recognized retroactively if they are considered material. Remember that an element is considered material if its omission or presentation may affect the user's decision-making of the information. If the entity considers that not correcting this error does not affect the decision-making of the information users, it is not necessary to carry out this process. Going back to the example analyzed, we see that a change in an accounting estimate and an accounting error are very different. Let's see a series of practical examples to understand this topic easily. Let's look at the first example. An entity acquires a building for 500,000 with a useful life of 30 years. The company estimates that in the year 20, it will sell the building for 80,000. That is, the asset's residual value is 16%. In year 20, due to the decrease in the real estate demand, the entity considers it will only be able to sell the asset for 60,000. This means that the residual value went from 16% to 12%. In this case, the residual value is the value for which an entity expects to sell an asset after a certain period of use. For this reason, this value must be deducted to calculate depreciation. In other words, once the entire asset is depreciated, the remaining value will be equal to the residual value. The immediate effect of this change is a variation in asset depreciation. To analyze this impact, 
let's calculate the carrying amount of the asset up to year 20. So, we must take the depreciable amount and divide this value by the useful life of the asset. Remember that the depreciable amount is the cost of the asset after deducting its residual value. In this case, this value will be equal to 420,000. Therefore, for the year 20, the accumulated depreciation of the asset will be equal to 280,000, and its carrying amount equal to 220,000. However, for the year 20 onwards, it must be taken into account that the residual value went from 80,000 to 60,000. So, to calculate the depreciable amount, we must take the carrying amount at the end of year 20 and subtract the modified residual value. For this reason, the depreciation expense for year 21 will be 16,000, which is equivalent to dividing the amount of 160,000 into 10 years of remaining useful life. Let's see another example where there are changes in accounting estimates. In this example, an entity leases a warehouse for five years to store perishable foods. However, Due to inventory characteristics, it is necessary to modify the warehouse interior to ensure the foods are in perfect condition. Both the lessor and lessee agree that once the lease agreement ends, it will be necessary to return the asset under the same conditions as the agreement beginning. The company estimates it must incur 40000 to leave the warehouse in the same conditions as the original asset is given up once five years have passed. In addition, at the end of year 4, the company considers it necessary to modify its estimate because the prices of raw materials to restore the asset increased considerably. Therefore, the entity management believes that it will have to disburse 60,000 instead of 40,000. This example is a change in accounting estimate because it results from new information received by the company. If you are not familiar with the topic of dismantling costs in the video description, I leave you a video with an explanatory example. In the third example, an entity acquires inventory, with a trusted supplier, for 200000 for four years without interest. Although the agreement does not incorporate the recognition of interest payable to the supplier, the entity must recognize an implicit interest as a result of the inventory financing. For this, the entity considers a rate of 10% reflects agreement expectations in relation with the present value. In this way, the entity must recognize an asset and a liability for 136,603. Each year, the entity must reverse the implicit interest against an interest expense until it reaches a liability corresponding to 200,000. However, what is the effect if at the end of year 2, the rate goes from 10% to 12%? To answer this question, we need to review the balance liability at the end of year 2. This balance is equal to 165,289. However, according to the new information, the liability at the end of year 2 should be 159,439. For this reason, the company must make an adjustment in the liability for 5,850. As we can see in the analyzed examples, all the changes are a consequence of new information emerged. That is, information that the entity did not have at the time of making the first estimate. I hope that with this explanation you have been able to understand the issue of changes in accounting estimates. You can leave me a comment if you want additional information related to this topic. On the other hand, I hope you will subscribe to this channel and I hope to see you in the next videos. Finally, if you want to learn IFRS, be an expert and make a difference, we remind you to review our course on International Financial Reporting Standards. The course has more than 270 explanatory videos, more than 370 analysis questions, personalized advice, and real-world examples and cases. In the video description, you can find all the course information. Cheer up, and take your professional career to the next level.